Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Uh, hit the like button if you like and please subscribe. It does help my channel and I appreciate it so very much. And uh, again, thank you for uh, watching my videos. Even if you don't subscribe or you don't like, it just is fine. I, I just uh, am happy that you just watch. So let's get on. I got to move this over a little bit. over just a hair there we go if I get it too wide I uh, cover up my cam and then my cam wants to go under <laughs> Barack Obama made one announcement that proved Democrats are in a panic mode Democrats are fighting to keep their razor thin majorities in November's midterm elections they're getting nervous about their chances and Barack Obama made one announcement that proved Democrats are in panic mode. Well, I suppose they are. The bad news is piling up for Democrats as campaign season comes down the home stretch. Republicans only need to flip one seat in the Senate, five seats in the House to retake control of Congress. Democrats are panicking about turnout in key battleground states ahead of next week's midterm elections. So see, this was uh, last week uh, that this came out, and tomorrow is the day. Enthusiasm to vote from key parts of the Democrat base, like black and Hispanic voters, is plunging after two disastrous years of President Joe Biden. With their con congressional majorities on the line, Democrats are hitting the panic button in the final week before the election. Former President Barack Obama is trying to ride to the rescue by holding rallies for Democrat candidates in a crucial battleground states. Obama is headed to Georgia, Wisconsin, Nevada, and Pennsylvania to fire up the Democrats' radical left-wing base in the lead up to Election Day. Now, all four states are home to a key battleground Senate races that will determine which party controls the Senate after the midterms. In all four states, Republican Senate candidates appear to have the momentum uh, heading into Election Day and are even leading in some polls. With President Joe Biden supporting an approval rating deeply underwater in key battleground states, Democrats are hoping Obama can regain some of his old campaign magic. <clears throat> He's probably a better ambassador for swing state Democrats than Biden is since he's more popular, especially in the competitive states, and less tied to the current issues of voters' minds. Inside elections, analyst Jacob Rubiskin, Rubaskin, Rubashkin. oh boy, I hope I pronounced that pretty close. <laughs> it's R-U-B-A-S-H, Rubash, K-I-N, Kim, Rubashkin said. He's also a more natural campaigner talking about Obama. Democrat candidates in swing states across the country have been trying to keep President Biden at arm's length. Biden has kept a low profile on the campaign trail this year, reserving most of his appearances for deep blue states. Obama plans to hit Michigan along the way to stump the state's embattled Democrat Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Voter turned out in midterm election drop-off from presidential years so Democrats are hoping Barack Obama can excite key parts of their base. Democrats insiders are worried about turnout by black, Hispanics, and younger voters, demographics that Obama did historically well uh, with during both of his presidential runs. President Obama remains able to unite base Democrats, persuadable voters, and to motivate demographics less likely to turn out in the midterm elections like young people. Ben LeBolt, a former spokesman for Obama's 2012 campaign, said, in the, <clears throat> that's what he said about the young people, but in the crucial Senate battleground state of Georgia, Democrats are hoping that Obama can turn out black voters in the race between incumbent Senator Raphael Warnock, Democrat of Georgia, Republican Herschel Walker. 
African American voters are going to be crucial to Democrat chances. Emory political science professor Andre Gillespie said bringing in uh, President Obama helps to underscore the importance of African American vote while also exciting other voters. While Democrats may hope Barack Obama saves them, in Virginia's gubernatorial race last year, his appearance didn't stop Republicans from winning a statewide race in the Commonwealth for the first time in a decade. Stay tuned to the Conservative Underground News for any updates on this ongoing story. Oh, let's go to this one. <clears throat> Taking a little time to load here. Then I'm not sure I'm going to get to it. Um, but we'll try anyway. Okay, I'm not getting to it. So, I guess this one, no, it's not turning out good. Alright, we'll get rid of it then. Let it go. Okay, back to that one. And for some reason we can't do that one, so let's get rid of it. If I can't do it, I don't need it. It's like that old saying, if you don't use it, lose it. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> this is Paul Ryan, if I get to see this one. Paul Ryan uses Fox News to pull his dirty trick on Donald Trump. Now, I hope I've not already seen this. Uh, former Rhino Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, is no fan of Donald Trump. Ryan is one of the many establishment elites trying to seize control of the Republican Party back from Trump and his grassroots supporters. And now Paul Ryan uses Fox News to pull this dirty trick on Donald Trump. Former Congressman Paul Ryan, uh, now a representative of Wisconsin, is a member of the board of directors for Fox Corporation, Fox News parent company. Ryan has no problem using his position to try and push Republicans away from former President Donald Trump. In an interview with the Fox News, Stuart Varney, Ryan again promoted the lie that Donald Trump could not win the presidential election in 2024. Ryan claimed the swing votes, voters in America who now live in the suburbs detest Trump and would never vote for him again. That new swing voter in American politics is a suburban voter and it really clears a suburban voter doesn't like Trump, but they like Republicans, Ryan stated. So I think anybody not named Trump, I think, is so much more likely to win the White House for us. Ryan claimed a 2024 Republican presidential primary would unfold like past Democrat contests, in which the base started out supporting an ideological candidate who could not win before settling an establishment elite's more electable candidate. Hmm. Sort of like what the Democrats did, Ryan claimed. They went from Dean and John Kerry in 2004. They went from Bernie Hillary in 16, 2016. They went from Bernie and Elizabeth Warren to Joe Biden to win in 2020. I think the same thing will be for us. We will, we want to win the White House so badly and beat the Democrats. And we know we're so much more likely to lose with Trump because of the fact that he is not popular with suburban voters that will, that will want to run or want to win, that will want to win, he continued. We all know he's so much more likely to lose the White House than anybody else running for president on our side of the aisle. So why would we want to go with that? 
<clears throat> Boy, he's kind of negative, isn't he? Of course, there's a major flaw with Ryan's argument. Donald Trump already won a presidential election in 2016 and received even more votes in 2020. Hmm. Oh boy, in the real clear politics polling, average shows Trump is currently leading Joe Biden by 0.2%. There's simply no evidence that Trump can't win the 24. Outside of the established elites, just claiming it to be true, that is. But the establishment elites, like Paul Ryan, really just want to control the Republican Party again so they can push amnesty for illegal aliens, globalistic trade deals, and endless foreign wars. We don't need that. We don't need that. So Paul Ryan and his elite, elitist pals are simply trying to gaslight Republican voters on Donald Trump's perceived electability in 2024. Stay tuned. you hear more news for this ongoing story. Probably will. Yeah, we probably will. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I have kind of caught a cold. It's been edging up on me, I think. Uh, let's see. Let's go see what this one is. These are just shorties. And, uh, well, what on earth is that? I don't want that. Hmm. Wonder why that happened. Well, never know. Well, let's try, uh, oh yes, here's one. This one is important. Yes, it is. National Guard called into address in Illinois' election security. Yeah, like Freedom Press. Public officials and pundits have sounded the alarm in recent weeks about the possibility of voter fraud and irregularities in the ongoing midterm election cycle. A number of states have launched efforts to combat such concerns, but Illinois took a novel approach to the issue by calling on the state's National Guard. The decision came in response to election-related problems dating back at least six years. Wow. We saw the challenges that came out of the 2016 election, and for us in Illinois, that is something that caught our attention, said Major General Richard Deanley in reference to election database breaches linked to Russian hackers. This incident reportedly comprised compromised personal information connected to roughly 500,000 voters across the state. Wow. While state election officials confirmed that the hack was not intended to change the outcome of any race, Neely nevertheless believes cybersecurity is a major concern ahead of Tuesday's election. Cyber is the new domain. Well, you know, like I've said all along, there's always rats under the table. You don't know what might happen. It's a man-made domain, so it's different than land, sea, air, space. And because of this, that distinctiveness, I think each of our states, our nation, and the entire world is trying to get their arms around security and what that means, he asserted. Elsewhere across the nation, election integrity, <clears throat> here we go, integrity, Concerns are more aligned with potential fraud or errors in the handling of absentee ballots. Earlier this year, the GOP Arizona State Senator Kelly Townsend encouraged volunteer poll watchers to stake out drop boxes across the state in an effort to dissuade possible fraud. I have been so pleased to hear that all of you are so vigilant and out there that want to camp out at these drop boxes, right, she said. So do it, do it. We put the word out today that if you're going to come and be like a mule and stuff ballot boxes this time, you're gonna get caught. <clears throat> I 
find that interesting. I like it. Yeah. The presence of this often armed individuals have resulted in concerns about voter intimidation. But a judge ruled last month that they have the constitutional freedom to stand watch over polling places. Well, I would think so. There shouldn't even be a question about that. The way this place has gone over the past two years, no telling what might go on. Townsend later clarified that she did not intend to advocate for any intimidation actions, tweeting, I should not have to say this, but wearing tactical gear while watching a ballot box could be considered a voter intimidation. Don't do it. I don't understand that part, do you? If they see somebody in a uniform, they're more likely to forget it and try to hit another one. If you have a person just standing there in street clothes, that ain't going to deter them away. I don't know. I, I, whatever. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> I'm just a YouTuber. I think I'll have a drink of coffee. I'll be back. Later. Probably a few seconds. 